we track all of the killings, maulings, and escapes by big cats on our website at bigcatrescue.org. And what was happening was there were so many people that were being mauled while they were paying to pet tigers or have their pictures made with tigers that USDA created a, uh, a requirement that you could not touch a big cat, a lion, tiger, or leopard, after it reached the age of 12 weeks because they became too dangerous. Because they're wild animals. <laughs> they're tigers. <laughs> right, okay. In the case of Haley Hildebrand, she was a 17-year-old girl. It was very common in her area where she lived in Kansas to have your picture made with a tiger for your yearbook. And so like all these other kids had done, she went to this facility, had her picture made with a 600-pound tiger who killed her during the photo shoot. As a result, there was a huge outcry for a bill called Haley's Act that would end the contact with these animals. USDA had already said that you couldn't touch them after the age of 12 weeks. USDA came back and said you can't touch the cub up until the age of eight weeks. And the reason for that is the cub doesn't have sufficient immune, uh, immune system to be able to deal with all of that handling. So what that did was it created an eight to 12 week window, a one month window, in which people can still pay to touch these tigers. And as long as people will pay to touch these tigers, breeders and dealers will breed excessively to meet that demand. It really comes back to the public. If you could just stop the public from doing this, that it would save so many lives. So let me make sure I have this straight. I could go to perhaps a mall, pay $20 or maybe $75, have my- 20. 20, okay, have my picture taken with a tiger cub who is between the ages of eight weeks and 12 weeks. And then, then I would leave with this cute little picture and the memory. Now. If somebody is making money out of this, which I'm assuming they must be, otherwise why would we have this going on, they would have to be breeding, it would seem to me, a tremendous amount of tigers each and every year to ensure that they have cubs open between the ages of 8 and 12 weeks. Am I right about this? That's correct. Do you have any idea of how big a business this is? We know that one vendor said that he could make over $20,000 in a single weekend at the mall. I know another person that breeds these animals who I had gotten a copy of an email that he had sent around mm -hmm. saying he needed 200 cubs per year just to be able to have all of his photo booths stocked. These photo booths are just, they travel around to malls, they put the cubs down on the floor in a cage, you go in, you have your picture made with the cub, and these cubs are being just constantly awakened and handled by the public. These are cubs that would spend two years or more with their mothers. So the mothers are being just bred to death to be able to provide these cubs for this purpose. And it's a horrible life for both the mother and for the cub. As you can imagine, being jostled awake, every time you try to finally drift off to sleep, these guys need a lot of sleep as cubs. And yet they're, every time somebody comes up with 10 or $20 to have their picture made, they're jerking that cub up and making the picture with them. So if there is only this one month window of opportunity to have your picture taken with a tiger cub, what happens to the tiger cub when it's 13 weeks old or maybe even a year old, or particularly when it's full grown, because we all know that a tiger cub grows into a tiger and they really are not suitable house pets. What happens to them? Unfortunately, we don't know in many cases where these animals end up. The ones we do know about always end up in horrible situations where they end up needing to be rescued because like you said, does somebody will take this animal in as a pet and think, well, it was used for these photo ops and it's handleable yeah. and so it's gonna be this great pet and then it gets to be a year, year and a half and they're like 200 pounds by then and the people are scared to death of them and they can't find a place fast enough to unload their animal. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.